I very recently got locked in this shed while putting something inside of it, but I found a way out. Today, I wanna to recreate the events that occurred that day and show you just how I got out. The events are all true and accurate, except for the outfit at the end. Yeah, I'm just gonna put it away. That's not true. I was here by myself. <laughs> okay, going in. tools in here. What am I going to do? <gasps> Break the door. That window does not open. Ah, about this. Won't fit. Where is Steve? Aha, huh, metal fatigue. If I bend the metal enough, it'll break. such a good boy. Why can't my dogs be as good as you? Why can't mine be as good as you? You're just such a good boy. You're such a good boy. You're such a good boy. No, mine are good too, but... Terrible job.
So I know I mentioned in a previous video not that long ago about having the issue of making my materials and then bringing them out and not having anywhere to put them. I'm actually not taking the strapping down right now. I'm going to leave it stacked on this two by six pallet thing that I made last year. Cover it so it's here when I need it, but it's not down there and in my way. So I'm going to stack it here. really nice to have some sort of storage area here that's closable like a steel truck box or something like that that is waterproof and rodent proof where you can keep like the straps and some rope and gloves stuff like that but I mean that's the thing that's what's hard is that everything needs to be improved the trail needs to be improved the stairs need to be improved. The sky mule could be improved. My loading from the truck down the rock mountain versus the stairs, everything can be improved, but I'm only one person. I can't do it all. So I sort of like water in a stream. It works for now. I'm just going down the path that, that I can and it works. For example, I need to bring pruners because here is my trail going through here and every time I'm coming out now I have to walk and push this bush out of the way. Hello, just walking out on my deck. So we're out here to put the final anchor bolt into that post. So we're here to do that today and I'm using the rock drill. And some of you asked how I was powering the Hilti drill throughout this whole section of this deck. I've been using the Blue Eddy power station that I have out here, which is the sponsor of this week's video. One of the other compelling reasons I had to put this deck on this side of the cabin and make it permanent rather than do something just temporary for work safe purposes is this is where my solar panels are going to go for the power station. So I have the Blue Eddy AC300 and B300 modular solar power system. It's an on or off the grid usage. You know, I definitely could see a place using it at home for our home property in the event of a power outage because we do get power outages and it offers 24 seven UPS home backup. I knew that where I would get the most use out of it would be here. I desperately needed power here. So some of you saw me in the winter time hauling baby blue down the steep mountain in the snow by myself and the only thing I regret is not having had it sooner. Throughout the duration of this cabin build I was really quite limited in not only the tools that I could use and bring out here but by the time that I could spend out here because most of the tools that I do use are battery operated. My batteries would all run out, my camera batteries would run out, my phone would be dying. I have to take everything in a backpack, hike it out of here, drive it home, charge it, drive it back, hike it back down. And doing that a couple times isn't a big deal but doing it repeatedly no, <laughs> done. I no longer have any power restrictions here, which is what I love about this power station. It's customizable. For me, I have the one B300, which gives me 3,072 watt hours of power. You can have up to four batteries, which gives you 12,288 watt hours. As it is now, you can power a thousand watt microwave for 2.6 hours, a 700 watt fridge for 3.7 hours, a 40 watt CPAP machine for over 65 hours. That's a lot of sleeping. And a 500 watt washing machine for 5.2 hours. For me, I might bring a little fridge out here or maybe an ice maker. So I think I'm totally fine with having one battery, but if I want to expand and grow out here, I can add more. AC300 is what houses all of the components. So we have a big 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter with a 6,000 watt surge, pure, clean, consistent power. And it has a really big solar charge controller. All of the outputs are on the front. So all of your 110 outlets are on the front. We've got some DC outputs on the front here, USB ports, USB-A ports, and everything to charge, like to charge the unit itself, everything for that is on the side. I have 35% of my battery left. I do not remember the last time I charged this unit at all. It was months ago and I have been using it every single time I come out here, charging all my batteries. Currently right now I'm charging my drone because my drone needs to be charged. And I always am charging my power batteries. So I always have this on 
and it's always charging, rotating my battery, so it's great. I'm gonna get the drill set up and then we'll go out and finish getting this part of the deck done. Oh yeah, baby. The Blue Eddy AC300 and B300 are truly a powerhouse. I was able to use the rock drill simultaneously while charging my phone, portable shower, drone, and a tool battery effortlessly. I do want to express the personal value that having this power station at this difficult to access remote off-grid location has meant to me as it allowed me to come and camp out here midwinter, sleeping in my tiny uninsulated shed, but kept comfortably warm with a little space heater running at night for as long as I needed it. I would not have done this without my Blue Eddy power station. This not only gave me more time on location to build my little cliffside oasis, but most importantly, it gave me an opportunity to grow as a person, getting outside my comfort zone, adding both adventure and memories to my life that are truly priceless. If you are looking for a truly customizable powerhouse modular solar power system, check out my link in the description box to get the Blue Eddy AC300 and B300 plus PV350s. Thank you so much to Blue Eddy for sponsoring today's video. Lovely. Okay, so moving on, deck is done. I think rather than what I thought I would need to do is to kind of create some bracing for support if the deck would want to be a little bit bouncy. It's not bouncy at all. Probably what's more important is some cross bracing. So I'm going to do some cross bracing. Then the other thing, I know a lot of people are hoping that I'm going to work on a railing next. But I don't know about you, <laughs> but this Tyvek is really disruptive. It's disruptive for my videos when I'm talking. It's really annoying to work in. So unfortunately, the, the railing is going to have to wait. I've been working like this for over two years with a, without a railing. It's something I'm used to. I'm not saying it's unsafe or it's safe. It just is what it is. I think I really need to deal with the Tyvek, get that sorted out like get the windows in start working on some insulation that way i can tidy up around here get rid of the insulation that's around here and i think that's going to be the next phase but let me do this cross bracing i'm just going to use two by fours that i have laying around My lifeline. Uh oh. Is this gonna be long enough? Nope. Uh. Found one. Ooh, just long enough. On second thought, I do have a, I do have longer ones. I really think it's important that it gets to the bottom. Uno momento, por favor. I'm gonna do one at the front too, so it matches. lunch. Choppers are going full tilt. Mm. Right. 
getting this tacker hammer up in here. It's impossible. But I brought this one from home last time. The exact problem. Oh, oh. Okay. That doesn't help. All right. Tape it is. So I'm just gonna go around and tape my little heart out here and tidy up all of this Tyvek. Okay, I just taped, taped all that stuff up into there. Tried to fit it nicely. Moving on to here, I need to add at the very top boards to make it the same thickness as what I have here. So to keep it all plumb and flush, I think I have to do that. Post there and then the two like that the rafter beams the timber frame rafters <sighs> I don't know if I need to add something there like if I can get away without doing that because really to be honest these windows these gable and windows are the whole space and then it's kind of kind of be just trim around that window so I don't even know if I'll put insulation I mean I could and then really the windows are going to go in and I'm probably just going to bulk it all out with some bulky or trim which I can adjust for the thickness difference if that makes sense just don't want to waste my time doing that if it's not really necessary I'm not sure that's the only thing so I'm just going to take some a couple minutes and think about it It'd be nice to not have to do it, and that's for sure. Be le less work. I ended up deciding to leave the rest of the timbers without that extra board. I really just felt like it was possible one way or another to make up the difference with my trim after the windows are installed. Right. Windows. Remember those big gable end windows that I made? Yeah. Those still need to come down. Ugh. Wouldn't that suck if they broke or they didn't fit? Same lunch. Cookies. That's all I got. I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut the window openings out. I might bring the windows inside the cabin. They've been laying on that pile underneath the tarp beside the shed for a long time. Pull some boards out for the siding. We'll look at some stuff. I just literally have to get rid of that Tyvek sound. <laughs> One of the reasons why I was going to hesitate to do this is because I'm not putting the window in yet and I know that the gable end is totally wide open but no critters have gotten in here yet. There's been no sign of anything and I don't want this to be an invitation but I think I'm going to grab the window and just temporarily put it in. This is not, I repeat, this is not how I'm leaving this but I want to go temporarily grab that window and put it in. Hopefully it fits. I haven't looked under here in ages. No. 
No. <sighs> Pack rats made a nest right underneath the window. And there is urine and poop all over my counter. This is supposed to be my counter. <gasps> uh. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna pull this window out and bring it over. That's gonna have to be the outside bar. There. It's not going anywhere. I hope. That's kind of exciting. There you are. Come on, out you go. There you go. You go on. There's all my siding. Well, I shouldn't even say all. I'm probably gonna have to mill more. There's a little bit more over in the back, but I will pull a few pieces out. Okay, you'd have to imagine, you'd have to use your imagination. I tried to just kind of place them. A lot of the boards have, because the tree was curved, I milled them so that the curve is in the board and I thought that might be kind of a cool feature. The battens in the back are pine, so it would be cedar, but of course I just quickly threw that up there. But that was kind of my idea because then you kind of get to see the whole board, live edge on each side. I don't mind it. Or, tried and true. Horizontal. I don't know, I'm still torn. I kind of like it. I kind of like this. It would be less work too. I'm honestly digging the vertical. I don't know. I'm so torn now. We have time though, you guys can give me your opinions. I seem to like it, I don't know, it just is different. It's unique. Either way, I do need to mill more cedar regardless. And I feel that my concern with the horizontal is that it takes more of that lumber, it takes more of that specific cedar with the black blackened outside on it because you're overlapping so much. I would have to make sure I have an abundance of it. I kind of thought I did, but to be honest, I've been looking around in the forest and I don't have as much as I thought I did. I have a lot of other cedar, just regular cedar, that I would be using for the reverse battens. That's easy to mill, that's easy to find, but I just am wondering if, if I would have enough material to do the horizontal anyway. I don't know, I think that looks cool. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts and hopefully I can make a decision. There's poop there. Probably did.